In Australia, the political establishment is still firmly in control. Uh, obviously, both major parties still adhere to the climate change religion, although we have seen some improvement in the coalition's approach to uh, energy policy, basically because electricity has become so unaffordable and unreliable for many Australians. They've uh, ditched the uh, proposed clean energy target, and now we're getting a national energy guarantee, which will uh, uh, have the emphasis on reliable power. However, we uh, as a nation are still committed uh, to uh, the Paris Climate Accord and other uh, international emissions targets. So it's been an improvement, but it's still our, our, our leaders, they, they, they still won't deviate from the approved line on climate change. So this global warming religion is interesting, obviously, but I've just been reading uh, quite an interesting report. Um, this one here. I don't know if people on the camera can see that. This here um, shows a great deal of uh, volcanic activity actually under the North Pole. And a lot of people haven't been, haven't been talking about this. Um, I'll, I'll just read a passage of this report. This is talking about the, the earthquakes, the volcanic, uh, I guess, earthquakes that have happened uh, underneath uh, the North Pole. Not small rumblings either, but rather magnitude 6 to 2 earthquakes in, in succession. It also seems that vulcanisation continued until 2008 and some data exists that indicate the vulcanisation continued until 2011 before it actually um, subsided. Um, so basically this report that I'm reading here uh, basically talks about a large degree of volcanic activity under the North Pole um, that has increased CO2 levels, uh, that has increased sea levels uh, a little bit and uh, this, this, um, this is Mother Nature. I, I, Man-made CO2, Tim Wilms driving his car to work isn't causing these volcanoes to erupt. Unless Al Gore can convince me with the inconvenient lie part three, um, I'm not seeing this occur. So volcanic activity under the North Pole that hasn't been reported at all in the mainstream media. Uh, for two, uh, Al Gore's predictions on Kilimanjaro, complete rubbish. Al Gore's predictions that Florida would be underwater, complete rubbish. Um, you know, there, there is not an apocalypse on the horizon. Uh, coal power stations are being built around the world. Germany is building them. Japan is building them. China is building them. The new, the best and the brightest technology. And guess what they're using? Australian coal. The nuclear stations that France has. The nuclear stations that Japan had the nuclear stations that China has, the nuclear stations that India has, guess what they're using? Australian uranium. Simply a bunch of laws enacted in the Rudd era have caused pensioners to go cold. The, the laws are ridiculous simply because, you know, they say that we can't use our own energy in Australia, but it's fine for them to ship it over to China uh, and use it in dirty coal um, generators there, but it's not fine you know, for us to use it uh, with some of the most modern clean coal power generators in the world. So we simply, we have lies uh, that are perpetrated by people like Al Gore. We have truths that aren't being told, like volcanic activity uh, under, the, under the North Pole. Um, and and we, we aren't also being told that Ice sheet uh, density and um, whatever is actually in is uh, sorry uh, is growing in the south, but is rescinding in the north. We aren't told that the Roman period uh, prior to Henry Ford and his dirty manufacturing uh, and his production lines and, and and the car. We aren't told that the Roman period was actually a lot warmer than it is uh, than it is now. We aren't told that we've just recovered from a mini ice age and that the River Thames last froze over in 1812. We aren't told all of these things because they don't fit neatly into the narrative of the anti-business communists 
uh, in the UN and in the EU um, who basically wants to give more control to government, wants to give more power to government, wants to take uh, a lot of power away from the people. And, and this global warming uh, bonanza is being used as a kind of a proxy to take power from the people and basically make them into serfs or, or into good citizens that the government can basically uh, take money from. And it, it, it's very sad. Of course, Australia was not immune from the threat of Islamic terror. We saw the uh, Brighton terror siege where uh, one, uh, one person was uh, shot and, and killed. And we also saw a number of uh, terror plots uh, foiled. Um, but from our uh, federal government, we still saw that, uh, you know, that they, st they still want immigration policy to be uh, business and, as usual and of course they've played down the link between Islam and terrorism. Let's not forget the ASIO uh, chief telling Pauline Hanson that there was zero evidence of our refugee program being linked to terrorism. This was actually a few days before the uh, Brighton siege which was committed by a Somali uh, refugee uh, and of course there was you know George Brandis crying over uh, Pauline Hanson wearing a burqa in uh, Parliament. So we haven't seen uh, much willingness to really uh, tackle the issue of Islam from our from our government and the uh, I was going to say the the opposition and the Greens, but you know we don't expect much from them. Uh, well, Pauline, she's an interesting lady. Um, George Brandis is a phony, um, and Islamic terrorism is real. Uh, there is a connection between a large degree of uh, unvetted, unfiltered mass immigration and an increase in crime. You know, that is simply the truth. Australia has a very generous uh, refugee program, but refugees um, uh, should be... Uh, well, they should be processed properly, maybe with outside the bounds of Australia, until they're proven to be both mentally and physically well um, before they're accepted uh, as fully fledged citizens. And maybe it is our job uh, when they're in those refugee camps to help them get well, to help them tick the boxes. But certainly, I don't think that it is you know, the job of the Australian government or the duty of the Australian people to put up with terrorists and terrorism. Uh, but certainly, obviously, that is not to say that as a left would probably try and uh, dogmatically say that we're saying that all refugees are terrorists and we're all racist, we're all redneck conservatives. No, we're basically just saying that there has to be a, a degree of due diligence. There has to be maybe... Uh, a greater degree of processing before all refugees are accepted into Australia and and, and maybe putting them into into vast um, you know not into vast areas but into concentrated areas is actually increasing more problems maybe to actually bring refugees up to speed uh, we should have a decentralized approach to immigration maybe we shouldn't put all uh, our immigrants into Western, into Western uh, Melbourne or to Western Sydney, but maybe we should put some into rural country Victoria. Maybe we should put some into the inner cities. Maybe even, God forbid, maybe we might even annoy some of the people in the eastern suburbs and put some refugees there. Yes, the regressive left, they've been quite busy uh, this year uh, attacking our uh, culture and history and freedoms. Uh, let us uh, remember that there were three inner Melbourne councils who decided to uh, cancel their Australia Day uh, festivities. The, the Greens, their official policy is to change the date of Australia Day. There are many Labor MPs who are speaking out about a uh, trying to change the day. And of course, we saw the the ABC's uh, youth radio station Triple J move its hottest 100 uh, from Australia Day and there were even attacks uh, on our colonial statues that they should be uh, torn down and of course all this is uh, you know supposedly to um, 
you know, placate indigenous uh, sensitivities, but it's, it, it, as we've seen it, it's more about, uh, you know, left, left-wing people, you know, virtue signalling, um, you know, indigenous people who live out in, uh, you know, rural and remote Australia, you know, they're more concerned about, you know, their, their own welfare rather than, you know, these symbolic things such as, you know, changing Australia Day. That's an interesting point you raise there. For some of the people who might not uh, know about Jacinta Price or, um, show. you know, you had it. So would you would you care to enlighten maybe on what real Indigenous people like Jacinta Price actually care about rather than kind of left wing communist uh, activists? Well, she, uh, well, I'll tell her, tell you what she's concerned about. She's more concerned about, you know, the domestic violence that goes on in Indigenous communities, uh, uh, sexual abuse, you know, the, uh, and also, you know, the um, poor health and educational outcomes. You know, those are the real, you know, Indigenous issues, like changing Australia Day and, for that matter, you know, constitutional recognition or, um, you know, an Indigenous voice to Parliament, that's not going to magically fix things, as the, you know, apology to the stolen generation didn't magically fix things. So we'd probably both agree that changing Australia Day won't fix the issues that we have. But what what do you think that would increase... Personally, I think investment in jobs and growth and investment in good education would, and, and housing would probably be the best um, uh, thing that I see is fixing this. What, what do you think would be the real fix? I don't think it's changing Australia, Dad, Tim. Yeah, and it's, it's exactly that, you know, practical, you know, solutions and also, you know, uh, disregarding, you know, political correctness because the left, they don't like to admit that there's, you know, these problems in Indigenous communities because, you know, they, they like to have the, you know, rose-coloured glasses that, you know, Indigenous uh, communities, you know, they're all, you know, uh, you know, lovely and, you know, they're, they're all living a, you know, greater uh, uh, existence. So it, it's, actually, it's actually, you know, quite a straightforward, you know, Admitting that there, you know, there is a problem in these areas, and actually have, you know, uh, implementing, you know, policies such as, you know, the cashless uh, welfare card, you know, making sure that there's actual property rights there, so to give, you know, local indigenous people an incentive to, you know, manage their their own affairs and look after their own prov- property, you know, basically, you know, uh, uh, f- applying the, you know, the law that applies applies to the rest of the country into into those remote communities and just you know looking at you know this community just like any other without you know this you know oh we we can't look like we're being you know racist or discriminatory and of course the debate that consumed or the second half of 2017 in Australia was that of same sex marriage we had the marriage law postal survey which uh, returned a 61.6% uh, yes vote uh, out of a close to 80% turnout. So we had uh, same-sex marriage uh, legalised uh, at the end of this year. Uh, sa- uh, sadly, though, there you know, were no uh, religious protections uh, enshrined in it, though there is a uh, review into religious freedoms, which we hope uh, something uh, comes of that. Now, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, conservatives were quite... Um, uh, disheartened, you know, by the, you know, overwhelming, yeah, uh, yes, uh, response. But to me, it was, you know, I've always, you know, believed that, you know, Australians were, were going to vote yes, yes on this. And I, I don't think that uh, this vote was a vote of approval for the rest of the left's agenda. I think people just, you know, voted on uh, the, uh, this issue. And certainly, as as we've discussed previously, you know, the Australian people, you know, are not behind, you know, changing Australia Day or, um, you know, having, you know, leftist thugs, you know, r- uh, run the streets. So um, I, I really don't think that this was, you know, a big, you know, setback for the, you know, right in Australia. Well, I think it's a setback. There's many setbacks. I think it's a cultural setback, honestly. I think uh, what marriage is, uh, is a man and a woman creating a child, having a family. And I think that changing that isn't a good thing. Uh, The other thing in the cultural decay is, especially in Victoria where we live, euthanasia was also legalised. So 
we and then and then we've got abortion till birth. So we we kill we're killing the unborn, we're killing our youth, and we we basically shitting on uh, family and the family unit. That's what I think we're doing here. That might be a bit controversial to you. That's my opinion on the matter. I think it was always going to go this way, but that 20% that abstained, I think that was probably that 20% uh, who didn't really uh, didn't really want to vote because they were they didn't a either care or b they they uh, didn't cast their vote because they may have been a yes voter. Uh, who saw the thuggishness and the violence, and then they were, um, you know, they were, they saw that the, the, the yes side. There's there's a dark underbelly to it. It is a rainbow tra a Trojan horse. Uh, that that was seen. So that twenty percent who abstained, I think, yeah, that could have split either way. Just just from what I've heard and what I've spoken, who I've spoken to. So that's that's not exactly good. Good, but that's what Howard would call field evidence, and I think a lot of people were turned off from voting from the thuggishness and the violence. You could see this as a great social step forward. Personally, I don't really. Um, homosexuality hasn't been illegal in Australia since the early 90s. I don't think it should be illegal, but I, I don't think that uh, the marriage should be recognised if it is with outside the, the bounds of man and woman. and. Personally, I think that's very regressive um, to go down this way, and I think I don't agree with it at all. And I think it signifies the diminishment of Christianity uh, in the West, and and it, and it, I think it will bring apart a lot of social decay. And, and personally, uh, you know, I don't really know. I think that a, a child deserves a mother and a father as well, and that, that's another thing. You're saying that a kid doesn't deserve a mother and a father. Um, you know, I find this disgusting. I completely disagree with it, but it is uh, not a setback for the right because a lot of the right now isn't that old school Christian right of the 90s. It's the, it's the how would you say, the civic nationalist uh, who understands economics and they don't really care what people do with themselves. So in, in the scheme of things, it's not really a setback for the right. But personally, you know, it doesn't really sit well with me, and I don't think it sits well with that thirty-eight percent of Australia as well. In Australian politics, it looks like we're heading towards uh, Prime Minister Bill Shorten because uh, Malcolm Turnbull has now lost uh, twenty-six uh, news polls in a row, or uh, as we recall, to claim the prime ministership from Tony Abbott. He set the benchmark of thirty news poll losses in a row, so he's nearly fulfilled his own failure uh, <laughs> benchmark. And we had two state elections this year. In Western Australia, uh, the uh, Labor opposition were elected uh, in a landslide. And of course, in Queensland, uh, and Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, her Labor government was uh, narrowly uh, re-elected, mainly thanks to uh, One Nation preferences and a pretty uh, mediocre LNP opposition. So in terms of uh, electoral fortunes uh, for the right and conservatives, it it wasn't uh, a good year, and it looks like we're heading for a f in the next year or so, because uh, a, f a federal election it could be next year sometime. Uh, you know, wall-to-wall -wall Labor governments around the nation. Certainly, with uh, AT or uh, Anthony Abbott, uh, well, no, no, TA would be Anthony Abbott, Tony, or be AT if you want to call him Anthony Abbott. That's his real name, but he he lost. 30 news polls, 30. Um, Turnbull has lost 26. Inevitably, <laughs> Turnbull will lose 30 news polls and he will still be Prime Minister and he will be made to look a fool. It will be beautiful. Uh, it's, it's certainly... Uh, because it, it amazes uh, me that, you know, obviously we're seeing, you know, the left's, um, you know, utopian vision fall apart with... 
uh, you know, ob obviously we've talked about it, you know, the unreliable and expensive power and how the left, you know, they want to attack our, you know, national institutions, you know, Australia Day, uh, colonial statues, um, and, you know, constantly calling, you know, the Australian people, you know, racist, sexist, whatever, yet the polling suggests that they, they're going to elect, you know, and Bill Shorten, he, you know, even though he says he's from the right of the Labour Party, he, you know, ba basically wants to implement a radical far left you know, economic agenda. Uh, let's uh, let's not forget. You know, his key platform is you know fighting uh, inequality, and you know he wants to you know really um, you know uh, beat down corporate Australia, and of course uh, wants to implement the the trade union movement's wish list. So it's. Australia is not in for, you know, um, what we've had in the past, uh, economically, you know, responsible Labor government. The days of Keating are over. Uh, the day, uh, well, you know, we didn't really have an economically responsible Labor government under Gillard, did we? We didn't really have a, an economically responsible Labor government under Rudd, did we? No. So I think that labour sensibility on, on, the, on the topic of economics long, long since has died, probably about 20 years ago when Keating fell. Now, um, you, look at, you look at this in the long term, he is saying all of this rubbish to basically galvanise his base. I, I highly doubt that he would actually implement any of this if he governed, but it's this kind of campaign rhetoric um, that, that, that we're seeing uh, here, and I think if we were to believe word for word what he's saying would be some kind of naivety, but I think we should understand that maybe he's just saying a lot of this shit to uh, get some funding from trade unions uh, for the next election campaign. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.